Hey, Holly. Hi, Dave. What's going on? Hey, is, do you think it's okay to still say happy holidays even though we're into January, well into January? Yeah, we're in the middle. Well, there is a holiday. You, I guess uh, you have Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> That's not the holiday. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I don't mean happy holidays. I meant happy new year. How long is it okay to say Happy New Year? Oh, that's a good uh, question. I think um, I think you get the first two weeks. I will give you a pass if. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so Happy that, New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. Is that? Do you think that's standard, or is this just your own personal call? That's my personal call. Okay. I mean, it's it's kind of like Christmas lights. When do you take them down? Do you take them down December twenty sixth, or do you leave them up? My, or like I, all holiday? Like, let's say you have your menorah up. No. Monica goes through. Yeah, we put it away at the day. The, the day, day ends. The, Everything the is gone. Burns there, out. Was, there was no remnants of whatever happened uh, the past eight days. Well, they clean the wax, so maybe it's a day later. Okay. <laughs> no, at Christmas lights. If I if I had Christmas lights or a tree, I think I would want to keep the tree up until it died. No, you don't want to do that. Why? What happens? Because Nothing. the needle. Because it's, it's so pretty. It's so it, pretty and festive. You want it in January? Would you like to see a Christmas tree January tenth? I wouldn't be opposed, although I might be thinking in my, you know, I, I might be yes, thinking, I, we, we got we to gotta get rid of this, we got to get rid of this, but it's so pretty and it smells so good. When you see Christmas lights on January 10th, do you think, oh, just take them down already? No. You don't think that. Okay. And, and, well, I, and, and further to that, if somebody left them up all year, I would just think they were practical. <laughs> Not lazy? Practical. Practical. How do you feel really? about it? If you I- saw Christmas lights on uh, <laughs> March 12th. You would have, uh, you would so say, random. I, I was trying to think of some, some random day. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a random day. No, just, just March 12th. Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe spring maybe. is coming and then you see, uh, Christmas lights. Does that put you in the festival, in the spirit? No, I still think they're pretty, but can, I don't know that I'm judging. Can you listen to Christmas music mm-hmm. on March 12th? You know, again, I wouldn't be listening to Christmas music past December 20, maybe even only on December 25th. So, no. No Christmas music March 12th. You do not want to hear anything? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no nothing I even remind you vaguely no. of Christmas. No. Do you? Would you listen to Christmas music Sure. If I heard Fairy Tales of New York on March okay. 12th, I would, uh, I would get a warm, fuzzy feeling, <laughs> which okay. I do any t- anyway. Um, I agree with you. I was thinking more of White Christmas or yeah, I mean, Santa so- Claus is coming to town in March. <laughs> right. No, I understand. But sometimes, you know, hearing White Christmas in, uh, on July 4th, not, not too bad. Like no. mid-Christmas, like uh, some people, you know, like the, they celebrate July 25th as half Christmas. People do that? I, I'm sure there are people who do that. I don't there think are there people. are people. I think there's people who like, all right, five more months till Christmas. July 5th, we should be listening to summer music. We should be listening to Surfing USA and... Uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Other Beach Boys tunes. All right. Yeah. Okay. No, I know. We all have certain rules that we have to live by. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Set the guidelines. These are just my feelings. I, I, I respect yours. If you want to listen to White Christmas in July and look forward to Christmas, that's fine. I Okay. I, <laughs> I would turn my head sideways for a second and then and then accept and then, okay. <laughs> I can get into I this. I can get into this. This is fine. Yeah. But it's nothing I, I search out. You know, I have my, okay. <laughs> I have my, um, I have, a, I have a drawer of Christmas music right. that's still out or not still out. Actually, yeah, I, I filed it away by now. And, by by now. the second week <laughs> of January. <laughs> yes, yeah. you have to. So you must have just put it away. Correct. Okay. <laughs> but still, it's still get the warm and fuzzies when I see like, this so list of things. Mushy. I, I, I love it. It's charming. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It's, it's one of your char- endearing qualities. That's, <laughs> of one of many. You're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think that's not always a compliment. No, no. <laughs> that used to be my put down. Oh, aren't you adorable? Oh, oh that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could just be, you're just adorable. All right. Uh, so we're, we're not celebrating holidays now. We are celebrating K Rock 1983. <laughs> Speaking of way in the past, we're talking, we're going, is it okay to celebrate 1983 in, uh, in 19- the 21st century? 1983 was an awesome year. I think it deserves celebrating any year, but especially right now, because that's where we are yes, in our countdown. I agree. Okay, so. In our 80s uh, Yeah, so we, realm. we started last week. Uh, we, we started our countdown and um, of 1983 from K-Rocks, uh, 106.7. Rock top, of the 80s. Top hits of that year of 1983. 
Uh, and now we're counting them down. What we're, number are we at? We're at 100. We are at number 100. All right. So this time we're doing 10 songs because we only did 6.7 songs last week. <laughs> and if you want to know how 6.7 works, you have to go back and listen to last week's show. I'm sure everybody <laughs> has. Yes. And no no working ahead. Don't look ahead to what we're we're talking about. No, do not. Okay. So in addition to the 106.7 songs, uh, as Dave has not yet told us, but K-Rock... Rock of the 80s, has pared down their list. They released it later, and they only they kept it at 80 songs. So I'm going to have to guess. Oh, correct. Dave knows which songs were eliminated from the list, and I'm going to have to guess with this 10 which songs were eliminated, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay. I, I, think, I, I think I did this. Correct. Yes. Okay. I think okay. I did. I did mark down. You should wing it. <laughs> You're ahead of the game. I I, I'm, I'm right to this there. Now. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'm. I'm. Uh, it's a I, I have listed. Okay. I made notes <laughs> a while ago, and then I forgot about them. And now I'm looking at the notes again. I'm like, okay, did I do that? And I, I think I did do it. So okay, well, if you didn't, you can make it up. Okay, <laughs> uh, number one hundred. Very good. Okay, so one hundred. Tell us what it is. It is the Human League fascination. Keep feeling. Fascination. Keep feeling fascination. Keep feeling in parentheses. In parentheses. There's yes. a lot of yeah. There's a, there's a lot of parenthetical songs in this. Or there's a couple. There are. Yeah. As long as we're talking it, if it was on the updated list or not. So do you think Human League Keep Feeling Fascination, I Keep do. Feeling in parentheses, is on the list? I do think so because I think everything Human League should be on the list. This was not. I'm shocked. It is shocking. Interestingly enough, this song was on a lot of different charts in the day. Yeah. For example... I, for example, it reached number eight on the pop charts, mm -hmm. reached number one on the dance disco charts. It reached number 14 on the mainstream rock charts. So you wow. got number one on dance disco, number 14 on mainstream rock, which is like KLOS, KMET oh. might be playing it. It reached number 56 on the R&B charts. This was a song that it's crossed a, over everywhere. It's a true crossover song. Yeah. Wow. Really cool. The, that's tough to do to appeal to so so many different genres yeah. of music, and you know everyone accepted it. And this was only on an EP, right? It was not on. I Dare. think so. It was not on Dare. Right. So yeah, th yeah this was the song after "Don't You Want Me." Yeah. Just another another great hit, and I am uh, surprised it's not on this list. Yeah, me too. Me too. And you want to hear something funny about this? Please tell me. <laughs> so in the video for the song, which mm -hmm. is not it's not a live performance video, but the band. Every member is seen playing an instrument as if it were a live performance. And Phil Oakey said when they when they made it, the aim of the video is to show that we're a group who play music together. This should help us in America where they, they believe we are a manufactured item mainly because we've never been live on TV there. I can understand that. Yeah, I do too. Good for them. Yeah. They had this, uh, they designated songs. I, I don't know if you looked that up. Yeah. Where, where some songs were dance and some were pop songs and they color coded them so what would this since this crossed over to dance and to pop they had their <laughs> they labeled this so would this, this be a pop song or a dance song according so to the band this was designated red which means it's a it was a dance track correct. according to themselves yeah yes they did this on per they yeah they like all right mm -hmm. This is blue. This is a pop song. This is red. This is obviously a dance track. Yeah. However, this dance track reached number 14 on mainstream rock charts. So, yay, go Human League. Yay. Go Human League. <laughs> I actually did hear a great cover of, um, there's this uh, a guy who did uh, like a slowed down acoustic version with some church or organ. Um, his name is Rob Crow. If you look it up, it's kind of cool. It's just, uh, it's, it's more, you know, <laughs> more melancholy. You recognize the song immediately? I mean, yeah. you're true to the... Yeah. yeah, well, you know, once you get to the chorus, you do. <laughs> Keep but feeling was, fascination. Yeah, but it was it was cool. Just, uh, you know, that that's, that's another testament to a good song. If you can make an, it? Yeah, if, or if you can make another arrangement and still find something yeah. int intriguing about it. I, I like that. So this was, uh, I I was just looking up different songs, you know, as you look up the look at these songs. Yeah. Um, this was one that I like. I will look for it because I like... I, I think I also just made up that word, acousticize. Uh, yeah, probably did. I, I wasn't going to question you on that. I was going to let it go. Yeah. I don't know if it's on the Sp Spotify, but if it is, I'll put it on the Spotify playlist. Uh, Rob Crow. Rob Crow, as, along with the yeah. Human League. Yes. It's kind Perfect. of fun. Okay. Like an extra, like, a t an, like an AT40 extra. There you go. Oh, <laughs> look at you pulling that one out. Um, number 99, Pete Shelley, telephone operator. Yes. Pete Shelley of the Buzzcocks. Yeah. Yeah. 
who uh, passed away like last mm-hmm. year, December of last year. I know December is a bad. I mean, we lost George Michael. Mm-hmm. Remember, uh, <laughs> Joe Strummer died in December. Is that right? Yeah, I, remember. I remember that. And yeah, Pete Shelley dies in December. That's a <laughs> well, death. Yeah. Uh, death is always hard, but yeah, uh, yeah December for some reason it, it hits you extra hard. I think. Yeah. I, uh, do you like this song? I do like this song. Do you like this song? Oh yeah. This song didn't do very well. I mean, it didn't. This wasn't a, a huge hit. Well, it made it to number ninety nine on the K Rock charts. <laughs> I don't believe it was in the top eighty, though, was it? Um, guess what? This one was. <gasps> number- I am. Shock. Oh, for two. Yes. Number 79 on the updated list. Oh, I am. Oh, so it's at the very end, but I'm over two so far. Still man yeah. on the list. I mean, yeah. keep feeling fascination. Not on the list. That's very strange. Yeah, they might have been particular. If it was too big a hit, <laughs> then maybe we're yeah. not going to put it on the list. Yeah. Maybe but- that's that's a clue for for the up for when we talk about other songs that are on this list. To see, uh, to, just to help you along. Okay, but I, 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 I think I was a pretty typical K Rock listener. Yeah, probably. Yeah, there were some more, you know, like out there artsy, you know, off the beaten path listeners, you know, for the hardcore. <laughs> right. But I don't know. I think like fascination. I think that was a mainstream song. Yeah, it was mainstream, and and so for it not to be on the list tells me they're going somebody, maybe somebody like Freddie Snakeskin made this. <laughs> made the call. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> next interview next yeah yeah we do the question <laughs> yeah so do you like the song oh yeah of course yeah i, mean, I, I miss the buzzcocks uh tremendously yeah uh, um they were yeah they were like one of my first punk bands that i got into and you know just kind of like it, yeah. you know like because intri- it was pop and it was yeah. punk. it was fast exactly it was fast but they were pop there was still like a melody to it and um i, I love that and then and that indeed go, this is the case with uh, with telephone operator. Yeah, you know, did, I I did not know. I I read this. I don't know if this was an actual tribute, but it said tributes to Pete Shelley came from you know a wide variety of obviously musicians. Pearl Jam, Duff McKagan, The Pixies, Billy Talent, Peter Hook, Duran Duran, Billy Joe Armstrong, Mike Joyce, Gary Kemp, Flea, Mike Mills, Ginger Wildheart, Glenn Matlock, and Stuart Brathwaite. This there wasn't an actual tribute. They're just saying. Right. This. I mean, you don't know that there was an actual tribute to Pete Shelley anywhere, um, either live or recorded. Oh no, but you know, well, of anyone, course, everybody anyone, is saluting him. Right. Anyone our age yeah. remembers the Buzzcocks fondly, and yeah. so that's that's very nice. Actually, I um, I did see this thing. There's a, uh, a Pete Shelley memorial campaign that's raised over six thousand yeah. pounds this year towards the creation of a permanent memorial to Pete in his hometown of Lay. Is it Lay? L e i g h. I think it's Lay or Lee or Ligre. Ligre. <laughs> I'm sure there's some. There's no way it's just. It's not Lay. There's no way. Lee. You think it's I would Lee, say Lee, but I that might th- be Americanized. I think yeah. If it was Americanized, it, it would be Lay. If it's English, <laughs> if it's from England, it would probably be Lee. Yeah. Showing off our lack of. Uh, we have a general lack lack of knowledge. <laughs> we appreciate uh, British. Or if I'm watching, I'm watching The Crown, so we we appreciate. <laughs> The, we appreciate the music that comes from Britain, <laughs> but we don't actually know how to pronounce, except for appreciate. We I've been doing that for uh, annoyingly for uh, the past. That's adorable. Uh, uh, yeah, it is adorable. <laughs> it is. It really is. It, you, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, it'd be nice uh, if one day when we do visit Lee, mm-hmm. England, we will see a memorial when we get there. Wouldn't one day. that be nice? That's a yeah. I think that's lovely. Yeah, oh no. Yeah. And indeed. deserved. Yeah, well deserved. Um okay. 98. So moving on to ninety eight. Here's a song. <laughs> <laughs> the Bongo's Barbarella. Yes. Do you know this song? Yes, I do. Okay. I did not remember this song. <gasps> that, really? That much. No, but I remember the other song that they had that was popular. The numbers with wings. Yes. Okay. So that that was their their big hit. The, the, yeah. I don't I Played Barbarella. I, I mean, I think this is kind of the mm. song that time forgot, except for you, apparently. No, you do, I totally, You do remember this. I do remember it. Okay, so. Yeah, it's very catchy. Yeah, it was nominated for a Best An Direction MTV. in a Video. Yeah, the yeah. first MTV Video Music Award had uh, had the Bongos number with wings on there. They <laughs> lost to Sharp Dressed Man. Ah, well. And that's our, and a number with wings was number six for, was number one for six weeks on the CMJ charts. I have no re- recollection of Barbarella. Oh. So tell me about Barbarella. So, I'm is, sorry. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> well, I can't. I can. I can tell you a little bit about them. Okay. So this is funny. They they're from Hoboken, New Jersey, home of Frank Sinatra. I believe you. You would know. You know these things. I heard it referred to as the Hoboken pop scene. Did you know that Hoboken had a pop scene? Maybe the Smithereens might be from there as well. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I I don't know. But yeah, Hoboken was not when when I lived in New York. There was a there was a cool club called Maxwell's that we we went to. In Hoboken? In Hoboken, yeah. You know, you just, we needed to get off the island. So Hoboken was kind of a charming little area in, when we, when we lived yeah. there. We kind of liked going, going to Hoboken. It was like, that was civility there a little bit. That's instead really of, funny. Instead of like the craziness of the city. But the, but yeah, really good, really good, uh, club. That people I, say just the opposite. They want to get out of Hoboken and go into, well, of course, <laughs> going well, to New York. Right. Wherever you are is where you want to leave or yeah. get out of. Yeah. But not that many people say that about New York. Well, New Yorkers, you know, yeah, true New Yorkers, which I know you I are know, not. But there were always good shows at, uh, this was a cool club. I remember we saw, I remember seeing the Posies there and oh, um, a few I bands. There's actually, um, The Replacements just had a, an album that came out that's The Replacements at Maxwell's. That's all I know about Hoboken. Well, that's that we had to know. Actually, and we did have some friends who lived in Hoboken. Like, oh, if we had a choice to live out here again, maybe that's where we would have chosen <laughs> That's I, so. That's I, my. Yeah, that's that's all I know about Hoboken. I just know it's a suburb. I mean, a suburb. Yeah. I mean, it's a suburb of New York. It's in New Jersey, but it's right. people consider it a suburb of New York. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, I never thought it, it was, was a you know a hip or any anything. Sure, Jersey could be hip. Very good to know. Ah, yeah. uh, no, I'm not. I'm all not right. slamming New Jersey by any means. I have family there. Okay. Oh. No disrespect. Yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> no, Tony Soprano. No <laughs> <Yeah>. disrespect. <laughs> All right. Well, so yeah, that okay. was nice. Um, so yeah. So I hope you went back and listened to it. I did. Yeah. It's good. It's a good song. It's not a number with wings, but yeah. it's a good song. I agree. Different. Well. Uh, can you tell me um, what what else can you tell me about Barbarella <laughs> from the eighties? Do you 80s? have something you want to tell me about? Well, what what can you? What's the significance of Barbarella for eighty for an eighties music fan? Like Jane Fonda. Yes, Jane Fonda was in it, correct? Yeah. There was a character in there in the movie Barbarella, there played was. by Milo O'Shea. Do you know the name of the character? I do not. The name of the character is Durand Durand. <laughs> is that, that true? Yes, and that's where Durand Durand got their name. Uh, you had no idea. Oh, so there you go. Thanks, fun Dave. fact. Oh, that sure. That is a fun fact. That's probably the most fun fact. Or can I say the funnest fact? The funnest of the... Uh, yeah, okay. the funnest of the facts. We're, we're not done with fun facts. No. Um, so oh, I can't say. Okay. okay. So I, again, and I give you another quiz question. Is this song on the updated K-Rock list? I want to say no. Okay. I'm saying no, but it won't surprise me if it is. Okay. So there's a twist. <laughs> A twist to this song. Um, actually, the song that is now at number 67, the song that is now at number 67 on this <laughs> K- updated K-Rock list has been, uh, it's not Barbarella, it's Number With Wings. Is the but song. Numbers With Wings, okay. Number with, numbers With Wings was not on the old list, but the updated list, it's on. Oh, that is a fun fact. There you go. Wow. So there you go. The Bongos, Number With Wings is on there, but... We finally remember the bongos Barbarella, which will be on the Spotify playlist. I think you should add numbers with numbers with wings, right? Yeah, yeah, plural. Yeah. Can we take a break? Please, please, for the love of God, let's take a break. I gotta get some air. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to 1983. All right. Let's 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 <laughs> count them down. Remember, the smaller the number, the bigger the hit. All right, Casey. 97. Uh, yes, number 97. Kaja Gugu, Too Shy. Big, 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 big hit. Huge hit. Yes. Surprised it, that it's at 97. Uh, yeah. And definitely on the top 80. Uh, you One would think that, wouldn't one? It's, it's not on the list. Get out. Okay. Get out. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right. I'll do the rest on my own. See ya. <laughs> Too big a hit. Number five in the U.S. Took two weeks to hit number one in the U.K. Do you know who produced this song? Um, I'll give you a hint. Think Barbarella. <laughs> Durand- That's my oh, hint. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait. Okay. What, what were you going to say? 
Uh, Nick Rhodes. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Produced by Nick Rhodes. Yeah. Co-produced. Wow. I'm shocked and a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not on the list? Yeah. Still, hey. still a great song. Do you know, obviously you know the lead singer. Lamal? Yes. Or as he went after they after they split, the band went on by as Kaja. I do remember that. Yeah. Vaguely. I did not remember that. <laughs> and he went on as Lamal. Yes. Yeah. Do you know his real name? I know his real name. Okay. Chris Hamill. Yes. Where did he get Lamal? He got Lamal. Are you looking at your notes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is not an open book test. Really? Okay, then just tell no, me. You, <laughs> do you have it there? I thought I did. If I didn't, I read it and now I can't find it. Uh, okay. Tell me. So his last name is Hamill. <laughs> Rearrange the letters and you come up with Lamal. So clever. Ah, oh, so clever. So clever. So clever. And where do you think the name of the song, uh, the name of the band, Kaja Goo Goo, came from? It's got to be like Baby Talk or something. I don't know. Yes. Is it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm asking you because I thought you knew everything. But yes. Um, yeah, actually, I, I was lying. I said the name of, well, according to Wikipedia, the name of the group <laughs> was then changed to Kaja Goo Goo, coined phonetically from a baby's first sounds, Gaga Goo Goo. Hmm. I don't know where they came up with Kaja. And what the hell? Why would why, that occur to you to name a band that? I It was memorable. Yeah, it was. Actually, it was. Yeah. Actually, his hair was equally memorable to the name of the band. Whose hair did you like better? Uh, Mike, a flock of seagulls or Limal? Oh, Limal. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And my, my own personal preference. Okay. <laughs> I can respect that. Yes. Do you know? Do you remember he had one hit as Limal? Do you remember what it was? Uh, well, that yeah, was a never ending story. Okay. Oh, Good. Well, we talked about this on our uh, podcast. Oh, I thought you made. Do you listen? Do you, you ever go back and listen? Che- you should check in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Actually, I don't think I think we've talked about, it, but I don't think we've reached the. He hasn't left. Obviously, in 1983, he's still in <laughs> Kaja Goo. Oh, but we must have spoken about. Maybe it was a. Maybe it was one of your favorite songs of the oh, decade. I saw him all at the revival show. Did that he was, sing both? Did he sing? Yeah, of course. I don't, just yeah, two songs. Did, two songs. Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, with the show, I think we you know we talked about it. You get like two or three songs. Yeah. And so we did Too Shy and Never, Never Ending, Ending Story. Story. Yeah. <laughs> it, these revival shows are uh, you play your songs and then and get, get off, off. The, the stage exactly. Yeah, that's what people want to see or hear. Yeah, we don't have patience yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're old. <laughs> yeah, Ugh, old people. Yes. Get me started. <laughs> All right, we're up to ninety six. Yes, please do. Yes, it's a. Uh, it's Public Image Limited, or PIL, mm-hmm. and it is This Is Not A Love Song, mm-hmm. from This Is What You Want, This Is What You Get. Uh, the song peaked <laughs> at number five yeah. on the charts. It did. On the UK charts. Yeah, and didn't chart here at all. Yeah, not surprising. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you like the song? Oh, yeah. How do you not like John, John Lydon? Yeah, this was, uh, it's very <laughs> funny. I mean, it, this was his... Probably his most commercial hit. Yes, definitely. Um, but he was being ironic, I think, in the way he created the song. Yes. <laughs> I think who has, oh, what, what do you have? What's your, <laughs> what do your notes tell you? I think his, his label asked him to write a nice marketable love song. And so he responded with this. Yeah. And do you know how many times it said in the song? This is not a love song? No. 44 times. 44. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yes, that's and yet know. people still play it at weddings. I'm sure. <laughs> Do you play it at yours? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, according to the this, it's uh, my notes. It says the song's lyrics lampooning the ire from some fans in the music press over the band's movement towards a more commercial commercial style. So he was making fun of it. He was. Yes. Yeah, it was totally ironic, and uh, it ended up being uh, a big hit. He surprising. was surprised. He was surprised. He 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 feels it was the most spiteful song he'd ever written. <laughs> So yeah, and and it was actually a reaction to another song um, called "Her Story" by the Flying Lizards, and that song is about uh, bands selling out their artistic pr- principles <laughs> for commercial success. Where it says, "But you still make money by singing sweet songs of love." This is this is a love song. This is a love song. <laughs> this is a love song. This is not a love song. Well, in yes. in the Flying Lizards, they say yeah. this is a love song. That's oh, that's funny. I did not know that. Yeah. It was a response yeah. record. Yes. Well, I thought it was a response to the record label. It was, uh, I think it was a response to a lot of things, but you know, he was very angry. 
do you think he knew it? He wasn't. <laughs> which, you, which fueled, you know, his artistic uh, songwriting ability. Do you think he was looking for a hit? I'm sure deep down. Yeah, of course. Everyone wants, wants a hit. Okay. Everybody wants a hit. I don't want to believe Johnny Ron- John Lydon wants a hit. If he didn't want a hit, he would not release music. He would not, or he would it's not. It's a creative outlet. He would not be on a big label. He would not. He wanted a hit. Okay. Everybody wants Cynic. a hit. Cynic. Yes, <laughs> you, you're being it. the same. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you're on, he's uh, a I rebel. Can't, I can't remember what the label he was on, but it, he was on a major label. They had faith in it. Sex Pistols were on Warner Brothers. You okay, know, this, yes. they were all they wanted hits. This, was, but you know, being angry was their was their selling point. There's a lot of angry youths out there. Utes. <laughs> Ute. Yeah. And so going back to Hoboken. It it works. Yeah. Okay. Ang- All right. Ang- anger is an energy. <laughs> anger. <laughs> yeah. Is so, uh, yeah. It's which is funny. I mean, that's <laughs> nice that uh, you that know you, pre- you pretend right. You pretend one thing, and yeah. You know. Like and speaking of Christmas, mm-hmm. I mean, you watch uh, Love Actually. You've seen that movie. <laughs> I love that. Movie. Right. Exactly. But it's a big deal to get a Christmas song, and so his you know Phil Nye's. <laughs> His way of uh, of getting a hit was pretending he didn't care, but then but then actually you know like we just put Christmas instead of love and, and, so, and you know so being cynical funny. and it works yeah that worked I know you're right I know you're right That's, because you would reject getting signed to a big label if you were no you would put it out yourself or you wouldn't refuse to play you know why 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 would you put out music so if no you don't one want can it to be heard right okay. what's the purpose of that you win. You're right. He, he went on concert tour. He, you think he wanted to play shows and have no one show up? No, but people were always going to show up because Bec- because he was because he wanted he had a hit. record deal. Yes. Okay, it's, it's you all, win. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Johnny Rotten's a sellout. He's it's not. A, <laughs> I mean, that was a thing in the '80s. Everyone, you know, like scared of being a, a appearing like a sellout. Yeah, you, they were. That's it's fine. Yeah. You were. It was all right to be a sellout. I mean, that's why everyone is a rock and roll star. So you want to be a rock and roll star? I do. I do. <laughs> I think this is the closest we're, we're going to get. We're going to be podcast stars one day. We are? One day. Okay. Uh, speaking of stars, big, big stars yeah. who we love so much. Uh, 95. Cindy Lauper, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Yeah. She Like Johnny Lydon, she is a personality. Yeah. Just bigger than life. Do you remember? I, I don't remember the very first time I heard this song, but I just remember being... Ah, when it first came out and you first started hearing it, you know, hearing it on the radio, mm-hmm. how just this is, so, I guess, because in conjunction with the video. Yeah. Oh, I mean, she was made for MTV. Oh, God. That know. was, it's like they, if you went in a lab and you wanted to create someone for this, this new visual medium, you would have, it's her. you would have created Cindy Lauper. Yeah. 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 God. Just a unique personality and super talented. Yeah, we talked about the the MTV the bongos at uh, getting the one yeah. nomination. Cindy had nine nominations at that first awards. Oh ceremony. wow! Yeah, but uh, she lost the video of the year to the Cars. You might think. Yeah. She won the female video of the year. She lost best new artist to the Eurythmics. What the heck? What the what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the Eurythmics, but wow. Yeah, hmm. but she was great, I and mean, she still is. Have you seen Kinky Boots? I have. Yeah, you love it? Yes. Yeah, I, I love that play, yes. Never, you, I have not seen that. I you know. should. Yeah. You should. You I would know. love it. Oh, I know I would. Yeah. How could I not? Yeah. It's very cool. I uh, And actually, there's a new thing from Cindy coming out. I hope she's partnering with uh, Jane Lynch to, um, <laughs> to do some sort of comedy series, which has been described as kind of uh, the Golden Girls for today. Oh, I'm in. Jane Lynch and... And Cindy Lauper. Jane Lynch is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, really? I, I, I hadn't heard about this. Neither had I until okay. I did the research. So you, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's, research. Yeah, so that's coming out soon, I hope. Yeah. So, yes, Cindy can do no wrong. I'm so, yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been, she's been talked about. She's a good. She's a good. She's a good one. Yeah, that I'm whole she's album. She's so, un, yeah. Just, yeah. She's got a, some great, great hits yeah. and songs and albums and very talented. We love her. All right. Do you know that she did not write this song? She wrote yeah. most of her. She wrote a lot of her songs, but she Uh-oh. did not write this one. Who wrote this one? Uh, this guy was from Philadelphia. His name was Robert Hazard, and he had he, has, he had a band back in the seventy late seventies. Wasn't I think? it like a reggae song or something like that? It, it, mi- it might have been. I don't know. 
but uh, they, they refer to it as a, a a girl power song written by a man like I Will Survive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. But she did write. She did write a lot of her. Did you hear? Do you remember the uh, the Weird Al? Girls just want to have lunch. Hilarious. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's yeah. so true. Girls yeah. just want to have lunch. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so here's your question. Is this song on the updated list? Yeah. No. Because it's too commercial. Too big a hit, I think. Wow. Uh, yeah, so not on the updated I list. I can't. I'm, I know. They're, they're very particular in 83. I mean, this was like these K-Rock hits started becoming mainstream. The songs that normally would have been played on K-Rock. Yeah. Um, or probably started on K-Rock and just got switched over to uh, to Top 40 because they, they just became so huge. That's really interesting. There's this a number one is, of songs. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm shocked. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to go against my instinct for the rest of these, for the rest of my guesses. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's go to 94 then. I'm, I think I'm zero for six. No, you're doing, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 94, Spandau Ballet, Communication. Mm-hmm. This is a good song. I love this song. I forgot about this and uh, how good it is. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I was, this is one where it was kind of a, an earworm for me yeah, <laughs> after yes. I played it. Like, oh my God, I love it. Loved it then, love it now. Yeah. Do you remember the, the first song to cut a long story short? I don't. Oh. See that I I was I was not a big Spandau Ballet fan. You know, like I didn't buy the records or stuff, but I you know I liked the the singles. Yeah. Did you were you into them? Did you see them? At, I did like the them. Time? I don't think I have ever seen them, although it's hard to remember. Yeah, I'm. Sh- <laughs> I understand. But I but yeah, from their very from their first single, and you know, funny, true, they're probably their biggest hit, right? Oh, easily. Not my favorite. Not my favorite song. Well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but yeah, they were they were great. The brothers were the brothers yeah, in the band. There were brothers in the band. Okay, Gary and Martin Kemp. Gary was the guitar. Gary's the, vocals. Gar- Gary's the lead singer, and Martin Tony Hadley was the lead singer, wasn't he? So the lead singer of Spandau Ballet, Tony Hadley. Tony Hadley. Yeah. Unique voice. He unique voice, but uh, Gary Kemp, whose voice you'll also recognize he was backing vocals and his brother martin on bass their sound <laughs> yeah, their sound right. is very distinctive well you yeah and you hear tony's voice and it's uh very distinctive i could yeah. recognize it probably if he did a commercial I'm like oh yeah that's the spandau ballet guy it's <laughs> or uh, you <laughs> spandau know? ballet guy yeah well i don't well actually the video for true it was very you he had uh like a good preppy clean cut look <laughs> yes. with a kind of unique style or you know just kind of look of the 80s the mid 80s yeah I, I think probably so. Okay, your assignment is to go back and listen to "Cut a Long Story Short," which was their first, their debut single. That was the one you liked. Yes. Oh, well, I love. I mean, I love communication. I, I like them. I've I've always been a fan. But you probably they were kind of like ABC. Now yes. I think about it a little bit. <laughs> Maybe that's the I don't yeah, know, just the underlying d- dancey, new romantic type. Uh, type sound yeah that's probably yeah. it I just not, you were a new romantic yeah <laughs> come on I, tried. I, did. I might have been a poser but i did try to you know yeah like dress the part and you know you probably recognize gary and martin kemp because they went on to have tv you know when you think about spandau ballet i think you think about them first because they went on to have tv careers in in britain after is that right yes gary kemp he oh, went says- he was in the bodyguard with whitney houston he was really? in killing zoe nice yeah well, it says on Wikipedia, there was the Gangs of Britain with Gary and Martin Kemp. <laughs> okay, yeah. Brothers. Gangster twins, Ronald and Reginald Cray in the Cray in the Cray's movie. That's that's it. Okay. Brothers Gary and Martin Kemp travel the UK exploring both latter day and contemporary gangs. Nice. Okay. That was that was their show, the Gangs of Britain with Gary and Martin Kemp. <laughs> nice. All right. And they were I think the Cray's. The craze, yeah, that's, yeah. They were in that. They were the craze. They were the craze. They were the craze. That's it. Okay, that's where I know the names. How Gary are you and Mark. Put this together. Wow, <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, all right. Okay. Moving on to yeah. uh, ninety-three. Uh, another song in parentheses. Oh, by the way, oh, uh, was this Spando Ballet Communication? Uh, was this on the list? So my instinct is to say no, but I am going to say yes. Okay, another asterisk. <laughs> Uh, True is not on the list. That reached number four. But Lifeline is on. Uh, oh, Lifeline is. Oh, I think we're going to talk about Lifeline later on. Shh. Never mind. Okay. Lifeline is one of. I think Lifeline is probably my favorite Spandau Ballet song. Okay. 
So that's on the original list. All right, so I'll edit that out. But <laughs> communication is not on this list. Okay. No, not on the updated list. As we move to number 93, mm-hmm. wham, young guns, in parentheses, go for it. Yes. However. Rapping. <laughs> wham, rap. Did you know that the, according to wham, the exclamation point is optional, but the brackets are not. Okay. Oh, the go so for go it? So go for it is, is part of the title, but you can either put or not put the exclamation point over uh, after young guns. Okay. Yes. I, I can live with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the parentheses. Go for it. Yes. This is a hilarious song. I love this song. Do you? I love them. I love everything about them. I yes. don't know. This is, uh, this is cr- <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun song. I mean, it's white, with white the- boys rapping. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cute white boys. Well, they are cute. They're cute white British boys. Yeah, so they were uh, great hair. This song, bro- <laughs> this was their first hit. Uh, you this, sure? Yes, this was their first hit. They okay, the first hit, but it's a second single. All right, this was their first hit. Okay. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, it absolutely was. Their okay. First hit. Um, they got on the program Top of the Pops in in the UK, and they they got on it because there was some band had to back out the last second. <laughs> it's like a movie. You guys. George, yes. Andrew, you could you oh. sing, right? Can you do can you play on this song? <laughs> can, can you play your your song? You got a song, don't you? Well, I, I think we do. That does sound okay. like a movie. Yeah. And they went in there and you could see it. I mean, it's on YouTube, their performance on top of the pops, and there's like this insane choreography. It's just cheese ball. Oh. Um but it worked. I mean, it it became a big hit after that was and that was their their launching pad. Yeah. They got on the show, and the rest is history. Can you sing all the words? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to. Oh, you're rapping. just embarrassed to say? It's rapping, so I'm not going to do that. And I don't sing, and I you don't. can do some of I can't raps. do George Michael, but it's it's great. Just <laughs> when we, If we ever have a website, I'm going to, we'll post the, yeah, <laughs> that video. But, I think it's, I, I, I'm going to go back and watch it because I great. didn't watch it when I was looking at this. And by the way, you, you just made a reference to ABC sounding, uh, Spando Ballet sounding like ABC. Yes. Having similar. This was actually, this was produced by a producer that worked with ABC. Steve okay. Brown. Oh, nice. Yeah. Who would have known? <sighs> you do. You do. <laughs> Is this on the updated list? <laughs> I'm saying yes. It is not on the list. I know. I should be fired. Go with your go with your instincts and then just say the opposite. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm really. I know. Uh, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. But now I'm guessing just based on what you said. I'm not guessing on what I really think. I'm guessing based on what you said. You can't outthink this. I know. <laughs> I cannot think much. Okay. <laughs> Number 92, Oingo Boingo, Nothing Bad Ever Happens. From Good for Your Soul. Good for Your Soul. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you like this song? Uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's an Oingo Boingo song, so yeah. it's fun. What's this not is, to like? Yeah, Oingo Boingo was a band that got played on K Rock and pretty much nowhere else <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, but it, it was rant- it was a distinctive, distinctively L A band, and I, um, L A just took to them. Um, but yeah, they like they would play. They used to play at the Palace a lot. Yeah, they constantly played yeah. the Palace, and you know that worked out. But when they toured the U S, it was smaller. You know. Was, oh yeah, it was yeah, tough yeah. for them. Um, they didn't, you know, they got a little bit of airplay, but not too much. But uh, mostly just an LA band. Yeah, I, have you ever seen them? Oh, of course, you've seen them. You've done the Halloween stuff. Um, no, you know, I never saw Oingo, Oingo Boingo. Oh. I did see Danny Elfman at the Hollywood Bowl for his like Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, show, but, uh, but oh, they're no, great. I got to see the band. Oh yeah, they're so fun. You know, I mean, Oingo Boingo still plays uh, without Danny. You can yeah. still see them. So can you? Is it okay to call it Oingo Boingo? Sure, I'm sure it's. They call it something else. I can't remember. Yeah, something yeah. something that makes you think of Oingo Boingo. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would see that. That would still be kind of fun. Yeah, they were my kind of band. I loved Oingo Boingo. I saw them a bunch of times. Uh, nothing bad ever happens. Updated list. Is it on the uh, the top eighties <laughs> of nineteen eighty three? I'm just saying yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the updated list. Okay then. Okay. Keep in mind, we're at number, we're in the 90s, so it's kind of tough to, you know, some of these, it's going to be tough to to break through. I don't know. You know. You think so? I don't know. Well, you know, there's 20 some odd songs, you know. Yeah. 
I don't know, the 26.7 songs are on this list yeah. from 83 that are not going to be on this list. But this is like all of them. I know. Huh? <laughs> well, 10 of them. All right. Uh, moving on to number 91, which is Peter Gabriel, Shock the Monkey. <laughs> Still a song that's played today. Yeah. And holds up amazingly well and is timeless. One of those songs that you could, you could have played it in, uh, you know, you could play it today. You could have played it in 83 could have played it in 63 yeah. and it would have been like well this is something i've never heard before you can yeah. play this in in 2030 and like wow this is something different <laughs> yeah yeah and you can't really pin but you can't uh stick it to a, a format really it got played on rock yeah uh rock radio here yeah peaked at number 29 on the u.s billboard charts 58 in the uk all right it was number one on the hot mainstream rock charts wow um, it was Gabriel's first top 40 hit in the U.S. Yeah, and it was his first single to chart higher here than in the U.K. Okay. Mm-hmm. In 2002, Don Ho recorded this for an album. Did you know this? No, Did, I'm not I'm up surprised. on my Don like, Ho trivia. This seems like something you would know. Don Ho recorded this for his, he, he did a, a compilation, When Pigs Fly, Songs You Never Thought You'd Hear. <laughs> I gotcha. I think uh, Pat Boone did something similar. Like oh, yeah. He recorded a heavy metal record. Yeah. Like a heavy metal record. I think William Shatner. You know, these actors do this. <laughs> Just like Don Ho. Don Ho. <laughs> yeah. This is a good one. This was a, and it's good. Good. This is from Security. The album yes. Security. Okay. But it was also called Peter Gabriel. Yes. <laughs> like, what was it? Four, four of his albums were. A, I've learned this from you. Eponymously mm-hmm. titled. Freak, it's a big word. I think. <laughs> Once in a while, I surprise. Yeah. Updated list, yes or no? Yay or nay? Yay. Yay, indeed. Yay, one for 10. Number 75. One for 10. 75. 75. Okay. Yeah. So one for 10. Congratulations. Yay. Go yeah. out with a bang. <laughs> All right, test. I, don't I give you the... Uh, Are you giving me? I, I think, think I, I give you. No, I think you, I think I did it. I asked you. I, I don't remember. Okay, you can ask me. All right. I'm, I'm, I I'm a big fat fail today. So I'm going to ask you. All right. And I apologize if I forced off. you to do this twice <laughs> in a row. That's okay. All right. Um, here we go. In which year did Elton John release the song I'm Still Standing? 83, 85, 87? 87. 83. What was the name of the first Prince album to be released in the 80s? Controversy, Prince, Dirty Mind. In the 80s. In the 80s. Prince or Dirty Mind? Because Controversy was 79, wasn't it? You know, oh, I am way off. Go ahead. Which? What are you going to go with? What was the last one? We have Controversy, Prince, Dirty Mind. I think I have to go with Dirty Mind. That is correct. Yeah. All right. One okay. for two. Okay. Madonna released the song Papa Don't Preach in which year? 84, 85, 86. 85. 86. 86. Yeah. Yes. One for three. Here we go. Who released the song Too Late for Goodbyes in 1984? John Lennon, Julian Lennon, George Harrison. John Lennon. No. No. Sorry. I should late for goodbye. Julian Lennon. Yes. That's sorry. Yes. That's okay. I meant Julian Lennon. <sighs> All right. <laughs> really I'm going to give you two for four. Okay. Thank you. In which year did Bruce Springsteen release the song Born in the USA? 82, 84, 86. 84. Correct. Um, okay, so where are we? Three for five. Three for five. We're at 40%. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> good was, at this. What was, the name of, <laughs> what was the name of Madonna's album released in 1989? Like a Prayer, Like a Virgin, You Can Dance. You Can Dance an album? Mm-hmm. Oh. It was like a dance themed okay. record. Was that it? Oh, it was Like a Prayer. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, what, where are we? Uh, th- uh, three for Three for six. <laughs> 50%. All right. We'll, yes. we'll stick with that. Three for six. Which of these songs did Tina Turner release in 1985? What's Love Got to Do With It? We Don't Need Another Hero? The Best. What's Love Got to Do With It? No. We Don't, we don't need, need Another, another hero. hero. What song by Bruce Springsteen begins with the phrase, Born Down in a Dead Man's Town? Are you not going to give me the choices of songs? I oh, know I'm you sorry. You would know it right off. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in my head like, what? <laughs> You know the song. I, yeah, that was bad of me. I should. I gotta get, <laughs> Just because like, you know the I answer. Know, like, Brilliant Disguise, My Hometown, Born in the USA. My Hometown. No. I was 
born in the USA. Wait, read it again. Read this. Which song by Bruce Springsteen begins with the phrase "Born down in a dead man's town"? Yeah, we'll see okay. now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these albums by Stevie Wonder was released in 1985? Hotter than July, Characters, and Square Circle. I think In Square Circle was before that. What are you going? Okay, with? read them again. Which of these albums by Stevie Wonder was released in 1985? Hotter than July, Characters, and Square Circle. Was it in Square Circle? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. The song Dirty Mind was released in 1980 by which artist? <laughs> Michael Jackson, Prince, Bruce Springsteen. There's a lot of repeats on Prince. this. Yes, very good. <laughs> All right, you got 50%. Okay. That's nothing to be proud of. You're fine. All right. Good job. I hope, yeah, I hope this helps other people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's wrap this up, shall we? Already? Oh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. All right, I'll see you next time. Okay, until then, this is Dave. This is Holly. Check you later. Over and out.